Hey everybody, in today's video, um, it's going to be kind of a rant video. My rant video is about Windows 8. But it's not about the reason why you're ranting about Windows 8. It's kind of a reverse rant, I guess. My rant is based on the fact that people will not use it. Everybody, I, I love, every time I see it, there's always a post talking about the new version of Windows, Windows, Windows 9 is going to bring back the start menu. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. That makes no sense. They're going to bring up the start menu when, hmm, I don't know, everybody's gotten used to it by now. Yeah, uh, Windows 8 has been around for quite a long while. And then Windows 8.1 came out, which made it even better. And which added features like the features for apps for people who don't know how to use Windows 8. That helps them get used to it now. And everybody asks, like, oh yeah, Microsoft, they're just going to go back to the old way how it used to be. Hmm, no. No. That's like that's like B. That's like saying, "Oh yeah, you you know Windows 7? Yeah, we're, we're gonna take that and turn it back to like the same exact UI of like Windows XP." I'm like, ah, oh, that's kind of a weird jump back. I guess everybody will be confused. Like, yeah, people will get fucking confused because by now people have gotten used to the start menu. They've got you no know, the new start screen. It's not a menu. It's a screen. They've gotten used to start screen. They they gotten used to you know. Having all these live tiles and seeing, you know, oh look, I got I got a calendar appointment. The Kroll show is coming on. It's happening tomorrow at 10:30 p.m. You know, I got all stuff like that. They've gotten used to multitasking by doing the thing and to doom, boom, 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 bang, and all that stuff like that. And look, a video I should watch. Look at that. I love that. I was like, oh look, a video I can watch because I just saw I got a notification over there. But you're just saying, oh yeah, they're just gonna get rid of it. No, they're not. Anyway, how I know this is let's show you how I know Microsoft is never going to start me back because they've taken this shit all the way down to the fucking level of craziness of keeping this. Let's go to Hyper-V. Let's go to a Windows Embedded system. If you know about Windows Embedded, Windows Embedded is the version of Windows that's basically stripped down to the flipping most thinnest you can make it. Now, you can build these copies. I'm running Industry Pro because I don't have... I've gotten sick of trying to build an image. I spent over three hours doing it. It's a waste of time. I'm getting sick of it. So, here's a Windows uh, 8 Enterprise system right here. I'm not going to connect it because it's such a mouth. So here it is. This is the uh, this is a Windows 8 Enterprise system. Oh, not Enterprise. It's an Industry Pro embedded system. Um, this one is my KMS server. It's Sphinx. Um, so you can sell it. You still a lock screen, obviously. That ain't going away. All right. Log in. Even on what is embedded in History Pro, it still asks you to sign with a Microsoft account if you didn't, if you're connected to the internet. That kind of made me mad, but I guess well, whatever. I don't care. I just have to disconnect from the internet, and they don't ask me. Um. But here we go. We're logged in, and let's pull the camera around so you can see it. So here it is. The here is a server. But this one's my KMS server, so the reason why I'm running embedded is because of that, because it only does a simple job, and that is to respond to activation attempts and to say yes. <laughs> That's all it does, and it has no other purpose except to do that, and that is its only job. And it's I need a high reliability system that's going to do that. And this has been proven that if I can yank the power out of this machine, it will still work. So look right up on there. That is Windows Embedded 8.1 Industry Pro. So you can tell this looks very much not like what you would expect a embedded system to look like. Everything is all shut up. I know you want me to start using Windows 8. Oh, we're still using. And here's how you use Windows 8. Shut your mouth. Go away. Sign out. All right. So that's that system. Um, that's Windows embedded. Um, uh, what else? Uh, I same thing. If you if you do Windows Embedded Eight, uh, what is it? Yeah, if if you build a Windows Eight embedded system, that you basically customize it to you tell do not install Metro apps. Uh, what do you think it's still going to install? The flipping start. It still would install Metro, but it's not installing the apps. There's a difference between the Metro apps environment and to just install the shell. Cause you got what I've mean, explained the things. To you. If you if you've done embedded like I have, you know what I'm talking about. You can choose in the shell, and then also new option. You can have the 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 metro environment. Then the metro environment is literally the ability to run the metro applications and have a framework. If you do not install it, you do not get the metro framework, and basically you get 
only the start menu with nothing on it. So there's that. Um, but really, it's not going away. If you if they have gone down to level to do embedded and leave it in, they put it in embedded. Shows you that it ain't going away. Microsoft really doesn't fill around the embedded too much. But if they do that to embed it, it ain't going away. So stop, so stop with your stop with your hopes. If you want the start menu, go get software. It's why that software exists. Microsoft will not put it back because people have gotten used to it. And to just say, oh, hey everybody, we're going to take away a feature that you probably have gotten used to and just switch it all around is retarded. Same thing over here. We have a server. This server is running a 2012 R2. Same exact thing. There's Metro, and I can use Metro to my advantage because I've gotten some cool Metro apps for my server that actually are really useful. Um, dude, smacked the mess of my camera. But really, it's not going away. Why would they do that? That doesn't make any sense to please the like the three percent of people who are not used to it, and the people who are complaining are who else? The power users. The power users are the ones that are complaining. Here's the thing, power users. This is directed to you. I'm a power user. If you don't like it, what do you do as a power user? What have we always done? Same thing with fucking phones. If you do not like it, you make it the way you like it. If you don't like Windows 8, you fucking go to Windows 7. Go to Linux for all anybody cares. You're not hurting Microsoft really because you already used Windows 8 before. I'm pretty sure you bought a license, so you've already given the money. Unless you've done it illegally. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it, unless you're really doing it and unless I don't I did my mind hurts sometimes when, you, when I hear this because it's if you don't like it then why are you continuing to complain about it and use it if you don't like it then why are you using it and wow I just looked at the side of my computer well the side of my server and boy look at them dirty fan grills them things need to be clean I need to clean them out one of these days sidetracked it um you're complaining about something that you can fix as a user and you do it every time you always fix it. If you don't want it, you do it. I got Metro Mix on here so that way I can take my Metro apps and make them to, to Windows on the actual window applications. Yeah, I, I corrected the problem I had. You know, some of the Metro apps I thought, hey, you're too big. You don't you do not do much of nothing. Why are you so big? Let's make it to an actual application. Freaking simple. This boop, click the corner, make it do its thing. In, it's my brain hurts every time I add, I see these all these complaints. You know I like Metro. Metro is really good. You need to use it, and then you won't have such a freaking problem with it. Most of the people that are complaining are people that will not use it. They just complain so much and will not use it. Hey, I just uploaded another video. Of this I just uploaded my video of uh, cleaning and resealing the screen of a zone. But I. Uh, my brain always hurts when I, when my brain always hurts when I hear the, the same things, the same constant things, always the same things. Why are we still complaining about it? Still thinking, still thinking that Microsoft's gonna say, "Oh yeah, yeah, okay, one percent, okay, one five, fifteen, twenty percent, how, how big a percentage you are." Yeah, we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna go back because we're gonna please you. And really the people that are complaining are, hmm, Linux people. They're not Windows users. Because if you're a Windows user, you don't fucking care. You still use it. You don't complain. Because if you complain, what's that going to do? You're not going to get nowhere with complaining. You should know that ahead of time that complaining ain't going to get you nowhere. It never has worked. It don't work for none of this stuff. The only time complaining has worked is when you don't act ranty. You, that's, that's, if you're going to complain, same thing a rule applies in politics if you're trying to email your politician or something. Having a 20 page letter or a even just as much as a full page describing how much you do not like it and how much you want it to be changed and go away is too much. Do you know how many things they get a day? Do you think they care? No. Do not do some really in incredibly formal message over two pages of just information what you don't like what you do like all this jazz no too long you need to shorten that up to a very short sweet thing saying here's what I don't like well first of all saying what you like and then what you don't like and say how it will how you would like to be, to be improved and then you're done that's it don't get on ranty ravey because you're instantly ranty ravey equals delete 
You think they care about your ranting and raving. They don't care. Microsoft does not care if you rant and rave because they know that you're not a real Microsoft user. I've been Microsoft user for years, but I still use Linux. Hell yeah, I use Linux. I love Linux for some things, not everything. Now, wow, that, that server was hard drive fault. Almost ready to burst. It's so full. But yeah. Um, wow, this rant's going on for 10 minutes. Mm, what else? What else should I talk about? Um, oh yeah, people talking about, oh, it's not, it's so hard to use. Well, here's the thing. Um, every computer now has been, most of the computers you're going to get today have already been on Windows 8. Already Windows 8. 8.1, I mean. The Windows, when the Windows 8 computers, they might with Windows 8 have now are now shipping with 8.1. They should be. Uh, my Surface didn't ship with 8.1. But that's probably because it was in a big old warehouse, waiting to be waiting. Because I had to get my Surface replaced. So, that but here's an app, the Helps and Tips app. The apps are literally nice and big, so big that it's so ridiculous. It is made so to show you what to do. For example, ah, click this. What is the start screen? How to get apps? How to see my apps? How to get to the fucking desktop? What else we got? Getting around. Going to start menu. Switching app. Seeing your recent app. Closing app. These are things that people don't know how to do, but they can now do. Here's the thing. This app is on the start menu when you first install Windows. That's and this app is there. It's not like you have to go to all apps. It's on the start screen. It's on the flipping first page. It is like it's it's on, it's on the first it's on the first row of icons. It's here, so that way you know you can't just look away from it as if you didn't see it. You cannot say you didn't see that app that says helps and tips. It's nice and big. It's got a question mark to show you what you need to know. User and account, Microsoft account, your file, searching for stuff. Basic action, search, print, more. Using an app, side by side apps, the charms menu. They tell you everything you know. You cannot dare tell me that you do not know how to, you do not know how to use it. Settings, shutting down more settings, app settings, Windows update, security settings, what's new in Windows 8, a nice, a nice brief list, not a big informal list, a nice brief list of how to do this. Does it have any settings in here? And look, dude, look, oh, uh, like a nice little search bar to show you what to do. And I don't think it has any app. No, it does. It has app, it has app, app, app actions. This is the first time I've opened that app because I don't need it because I know how to use my computer, but still. I swear, the people that complain, it all oh, drives me nuts. Always complaining about Windows 8, but expecting change. You're not going to get change if you keep complaining. The more you complain, the more Microsoft ignores your messages you people send. They don't care. Microsoft is still raking in the bucks. They're raking, really, the thing I hate is the statistics, the constant statistic uses change. Oh, these many people are, are, are not, you know, oh look, wait, Windows, Windows 8 is just topping where Windows Vista used to be. Well, depending on where you're getting your statistics from, here's a fact about statistics. When it comes to Windows 8 and how many users are using it, there is only about a few ways you can get analytics. One, activation installs. That's from Microsoft. It's kind of hard to obtain. So then you go to two, you go to website views. You go, you go to your analytics by website, which I can get that easily by going to my Google Analytics account and seeing who's been on the website, what web browser using, what operating system, the screen size of all damn things, location, everything. That stuff is always that stuff is readily available to me. And three, you have analytics on applications. So your your applications you launch most likely report back to an analytics server and tell you, tell them what your specs about your machine. Most times it's in the privacy statements you don't fucking read and the in terms of service you don't read anyway, so you don't even reading it, so you don't know it's doing that. Um, and what else? Yeah, that, 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 that software one is very true. Don't even think to the fact that they're not monitoring your computer. They know. They're doing that for a reason. They want to know who's installing it. So don't think they're not doing it. But the big one is the website one because it's very easy to obtain and most of the time those analytics are coming from the website that you're getting it from. And if you're getting those analytics, most of the time you're going to a very biased website. So yeah, you're not going to get the true numbers you're going to get. Because if you're going to a website that's mainly Linux based, and they're getting their statistics from that website, and they're saying, oh yeah, a lot more people are using Windows XP than they're using Windows 8. Or there are a lot more people using Windows 7 than they're using Windows 8. Well, ugh. Obviously, you should know that Windows, that, that Linux people do not like Windows 8. They like Windows 7 for some reason. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't. I don't use Windows 7 anymore. I've decommissioned it on my network. 
literally the only thing that's still running Windows 7 are a couple of virtual machines that are legacy machines and my main domain control that's a 2008 R2 system that's technically Windows 7 but the what if anything needs to change in Windows 8 they should add a couple more options to make it more desktop friendly so far it's very desktop friendly I like it you know it's very, it's very fine to me you don't even have the options where it boots directly into the, the, the desktop so basically you can separate your, yourself as much as you want from Metro and if you don't like Metro then don't fucking install Metro apps how about you pin a whole bunch of desktop apps to it I got some desktop apps pinned up here <gasps> Ooh. A lot of these apps are desktop apps with a pen. Um, ew, itchy. A lot, of, a lot of apps over here desktop pen. So they keep constantly complaining about. Oh, I, I wish that they, that Microsoft would stop doing all this stuff. You're not getting nowhere with it. They're not getting rid of it. And I hope Microsoft won't get rid of it. That'd be dumb to just confuse all the people that've already gotten used to it. You're just the late adapters that will not get used to it, and it's sad, very sad you won't get used to it because everybody else has gotten used to it. Wow, this review is, this rant's going on for a long time. I should end this before people stop looking at it, before people just are instantly turned away from the video by due to its length. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, I should probably name, I should probably label this video better so that way people would notice, oh look, it's probably a rant about Windows 8, I should probably watch it. <laughs> and this is a reverse rant. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I got another Windows 7 machine right over there. That machine over there, that machine right here is running Windows 7 Embedded. It's another embedded system because now I've been deploying Windows Embedded to all the computers that are not important to me. Alright, that's actually a Pentium 4 with so that's why one reason one has. But, yeah, I don't know what to talk about. Also, if, you, if, if, you're, if you're a Windows 8, 8.1 or 8, 8 user that has a tablet, you know how much you'd like Windows 8 because I know how much I'd like Windows 8 since I have a tablet oh my god it's the most amazing experience ever uh, what tablet do I have specifically obviously the Microsoft one I have the Surface I have the Surface Pro I have the Pro because I'm not ready for RT RT is not as good as it needs to be it's just the app store and wow with this computer cold probably because I'm in the server room right now and it's like freezing cold but yeah Windows 8 on a tablet is amazing get the boot up for a minute Boot up, you fool. There you go. Very quick. But Windows 8 on a tablet is absolutely amazing. It runs fast. And it works great. As long, as long as you have a halfway decent processor, you know, those, those, those first, those early, or those early Windows 8 tablets are really crappy. So they compare it to those. It's not a good idea. Ooh, that looks dirty. Let's get that off my screen. This needs to get moved. I'll do that in a minute. Yeah, Windows 8 on a ooh snap. Yeah, if you have a Windows 8 tablet, you know how much Windows 8's awesome. It's great, you know. Yeah, I still have my desktop. I've also adjusted so that's why it looks a little bit smaller because I condensed it so that way when I'm on the desktop I have more room. Mainly I did it for Photoshop, so Photoshop would just stop being cunty about every five frickin' thing it does. And plus because you know when I use this thing as a tablet, when I use this thing as a laptop, I use it as a laptop. You know, I don't use it as a tablet, I don't need all that dead screen real estate being wasted by having high resolution icons and things like that. But I'm going to end the review here because I've gotten more ranty about things than I should have. Uh, that's what this video is a rant. But eh, people complain, people expect change, but they don't address it correct. Well, one, they, the main thing enough with this: if you're gonna if you're gonna rant about it, stop being too ranty. This, you know, doing a video like this, a 19-minute video, say how much you hate Windows 8 is not going to get you anywhere because I, one, the video is too damn long. It's too long. You know, only people that's going to watch it are people that agree with you, which are people that, you know, hate, uh, hate Windows 8, apparently. Uh, you got to shorten it up, make it nice, sweet, and to the point, very simple, so that way the people who are reading it can get to the, get to the point. Um, two, stop wishing to start when you come back. It ain't coming back. You want to start when you go to Windows 7 and call it a freaking day. Stop giving everybody those nerves. Um, and three, understand the fact that if you want to make it like a desktop computer and you want to make it if you want to get rid of all that tablet stuff be a power user be the power user that you are stop complaining and stop acting and stop acting like you need somebody else to do the work for you you can do the work you've done it every single version of windows every time windows has come up with a version of an operating system and you don't like it what do you do
you change it so you so you can have it the way you want it. So I don't know what the problem is all of a sudden is if everybody acts like they have lost their minds and they do not know how to actually do some do stuff. But like I said, be the power user that you are and actually go off and change windows and make it the way you want it to be. This is nothing new. Why are you acting like this is new? You do this every time. Make it what you want it to be. That's why Windows was designed the way it is. It designs so you can make it the way you want it to be. You know, the, the Metro is a tad bit, is just a tad bit restrictive, but that does not mean it's a restricted to the point that you can't do nothing. This is fucking x86 for God's sake. This is x86. When has x86 or x64 or whatever, when has the PC architecture ever restricted to the point where you can't do nothing? There's nothing they can do to make it where you cannot customize this. You're going to tell me, there's just nobody can tell me that, that they have locked it down where you cannot customize this even more. For making it so bad, there's apps that will remove Metro completely and just make it so it's like Windows 7. Why are we complaining? They're not bringing it back, you know. People complain about Shadow Copy being gone. You know, hey, there's software there. Well, you can use that, but, you know, Microsoft may took the feature away officially, but they're not bringing it back. <laughs> Yeah, Microsoft took away the social feature on here, but you don't. But you know, I complained for a minute, but you know, eh, they. If I wanted it back, I can sure as hell work on making it get back. I can build my own goddamn version of the Zoom social network. Be the power user you are, and actually put the time in and make it the way you want it to be. You know, my desktop, I put a fair amount of time into making this computer the way I want it to be, and I made it. Very stockish. I don't. I didn't really modify that much of this computer because I like stock Windows 8. It's very good. It's not crappy. And we need to move this one over quick. But that's kind of in this video. I need to stop ranting. Before, not really ranting, but talking. What is that freaking beep I keep hearing? Is that damn backup system failing again? My battery hurts. Too bad. O N T. I don't care. All right. See you guys in the next video. I'm gonna upload this. Bye.